Welcome to this bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to uh, this episode of Found Footage Fool. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the bloody muscle bodybuilder in hell episode that we did uh, last week. And uh, we are working on the, the next full episode. But in the meantime, we have business to do. Uh, the, the work, the Lord's work, really, of doing found footage horror movie evaluations based on pure science pure uh objective evaluation with our five criteria and for this episode we are going to talk about a movie called apollo 18 which is a movie i feel like i've seen maybe two or three times at this point i watched it again for this episode but i think i've seen it a couple times before and it's one of those movies that's real sneaky it'll trick you where you think like maybe that wasn't as bad as i remember And then you watch it again. You're like, oh, God, this is not a good movie. And then you go back to it a a third time or a second time or a fifth time or whatever it is because you forget. It's like when I I go to eat uh, Sonic and I think, like, how bad could it be? Like a chili cheese dog from Sonic sounds pretty good. And then you eat it and you're like, oh, no, this was a, a horrible, horrible mistake. But then enough time passes And you think, oh, you know what sounds pretty good is a chili cheese dog from Sonic. And the cycle repeats. And so that is my relationship, I'm afraid, with Apollo 18. And uh, to give you a little bit of backstory on the movie itself, Apollo 18 uh, arrived in front of our eyes in 2011 So, you know, it's over a little over a decade old at this point, directed by Gonzalo Lopez Gallego. Uh, This was his first English language movie, and he went on to do some other work. Uh, He directed Backdraft 2, which is weird uh, in that I did not know that there was a Backdraft 2, and nor do I think there should have been. (laughs) And <laughs> I think Backdraft was all the story we needed. If you want to do another firefighter movie, do another firefighter movie. I don't think we need to call it Backdraft 2. At any rate, uh, he directed that, but he hasn't done... Uh, he's worked consistently, like he did uh, the movie Open Grave with uh, Charlotte Copley. He did that uh, kind of nouveau western, um, The Hollow Point with Patrick Wilson and Ian McShane. So, you know, he's been working. He's not a, 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 you know, a one and done kind of director. But uh, Apollo 18 was his first English language film. And it is the story purportedly. uh, The movie opens with, you know, hey, this is all stuff that we recovered from this NASA uh, collection of, of footage. And it's the idea is that the Apollo 18 Uh, mission was not actually scrapped the apollo 18 mission landed on the moon and there discovered some nastiness and the problem with apollo 18 uh, as a whole is that not much happens for most of the movie there are some moments here and there where it begins to develop its mystery and and um, maybe the best of which is a moment where as they're walking around outside the lunar module after they land on the moon and they find footprints in the uh, moon dust that are not theirs. And so they have to go find uh, who uh, might have actually been responsible for these footsteps and end up finding a Russian lander. And that's a pretty good mystery. But the mystery is resolved pretty quickly in the fact that they find this dead cosmonaut in pretty short order. And then the question is, hey, what caused the death of this cosmonaut? And the answer is basically moon bugs that look like rocks. And it's not very convincing or good. They're not very frightening. And also it's real backloaded as a lot of these movies that... You know, sort of 
follow the the template of a paranormal activity or Blair Witch where everything kind of builds to the ending, which is supposed to be more chaotic and so forth. And by the point that you get to that ending that is chaotic and exciting and et cetera, et cetera, uh, it is not very exciting. Um, you don't really care about any of these characters and you just kind of want the whole thing to be over with. Um, but that is just my subjective read on it. That doesn't mean that it's a bad found footage movie. That just means I did not have a good time watching it. But we have science to do here, people. So let us begin with criteria number one. Does it make sense in this movie to keep the camera on? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. This is a lunar mission where the cameras are always rolling. That is one of the points of the mission. Uh, I should say that one of the MacGuffins of the movie is that they are set to land on the moon in theory to plant these radar devices that will allow early detection of missiles launched by, you know, Soviet Union, China, whatever it was in the late sixties that might be launching missiles. And that is the undercover mission. That is why no one ever heard about the Apollo 18 mission because it was highly secret. And so it makes perfect sense that you're keeping the cameras on at all times. You're documenting the, uh, mission as it goes along. So fine. Keeping the camera on totally good. Uh, so that brings us to criteria number two, are the characters any good? And you know, as often with these movies, that's where you run into some trouble because you don't really have a whole lot of time to develop the characters very well. You know, you've got the commander who seems to be kind of straight faced, uh, very, um, uh, you know, by the book kind of guy, his big characteristic is that he's a snorer and you know, good Lord, I can relate. Uh, as my, my put upon lady friend will tell you. Um, but that's kind of a running gag in the movie, but you know, he's just a a by the numbers kind of dude. Then you have the second in command, uh, for this loner mission who is a family guy. And you know that because he carries a picture around of his family and wants to leave it on the moon. And, you know, early in the movie, we get some home video shots of him with his family at a cookout and that kind of thing. So that's his uh, char- character in the movie is he is the guy that ought to be be going home because he's got a family waiting for him. And then the third character, who's probably the most interesting, and maybe it's just because I think I like the actor in the role, is um, a, a guy playing, uh, I think, is, is it Ryan Robbins who's playing this guy? At any rate. Um, he's just a kind of a dude who, uh, is, is the navigator or pilot or whatever circling the moon. And he seems like he's a little goofier to some extent. Uh, maybe goofy isn't quite the way to put it. He j- he just seems like he's more of a whimsical kind of guy. You don't spend that much time with him, but you know, he's sort of all not quite Southern. Not, it's not quite that stereotype of the, you know, I'm just a good old boy here to make sure that every, everything works out, but it's in that vein. Right. Uh, so it's kind of a bummer that he's not in the movie more because he's one of the more interesting characters, or maybe it's just, again, he's a likable enough actor that he's bringing something to it. And it would be nice if he were around a little more, but he's not, he, he kind of bookends the movie more than anything. And occasionally pops in, to talk to the guys and uh, on the lunar surface. Um, So the characters are not great. They're certainly not enough to kind of pull you through the narrative, which is what you need for a movie like this. Uh, And then we get to part three, which is authenticity. And I would argue that the authenticity piece of this is where the movie shines. uh, If it does at all. And I think it looks fairly authentic. I mean, they're using either old cameras. I'm not exactly sure what the production was, they're either using old cameras or they are using a filter to make all of this look like the footage that you saw from, you know, the Apollo missions and so forth. It's in color, obviously. Most of it is. There's some black and white shots, but it looks pretty good. You know, if you're going to make a movie about a failed Apollo mission, I-, I would say that the big achievement of this movie is that it does look like an old Apollo mission. And there's, you know, some governmental double dealing 
that goes on throughout the movie, uh, aside from just the way it looks, but the way that the movie moves and some of the plot beats, that feels kind of natural to you. Like the government has a long history of doing some pretty jacked up stuff to its citizens in the uh, interest of national security or science or whatever, you know look no further than like the Tuskegee experiments for something like that. And so on the authenticity level, I'm, I'm pretty much with it. Uh, you know, if the movie had been more interesting and that brings us to number four, which is watchability is the movie actually a watchable movie. And that's kind of the problem is that most of the movie is just kind of dull. And because you're not really into the characters that much, it ends up being a little bit of a, a slog. To, to get through the movie. And by the time you get to the space bugs that are rampaging through the lunar module and one of the guys has apparently been taken over by these things or something, um, you know, that's a little unclear that you just kind of don't care. And, or at least I didn't. And I think that you know, for all the veracity of the way that the movie appears, there's not a whole lot of veracity in the way that the people behave. Um, you know, there's a little bit of lip service paid to like, Oh, can you believe we're on the moon? But that's kind of it. And nobody's really freaked out by the fact that like, Oh, we found this cosmonaut. Oh, we found this dead cosmonaut. And there were holes in his suit and his helmet. And what could have caused that? And was there only one of them? And is there another dude running around the moon? Maybe, you know, there, there were so many opportunities to do something sort of clever and, and spooky with this because it's, it's a great haunted house environment, right? Like you're, you're in a place that you can't escape from and it is a place rife with opportunity to be a, a spooky and scary movie. And it just squanders all of that stuff. And I kind of blame all of this on the writer of the movie who is a guy named Brian Miller who does not seem to have written anything else, at least not of note. And then there's a, a co-writer, a guy named Corey Goodman, who did, you know, some pretty bad movies like Priest and Underworld Blood Wars and The Last Witch Hunter. Uh, you know, though that is the sum total of of his writing credits. He worked for about five years. Um, and all of those movies are bad to badder. <laughs> you know, maybe priest comes close to being a decent movie, but even that's not very good. Uh, so yeah, it, you know, that's a real, uh, murderer's row of bad movies. And I think that Apollo 18 just doesn't do anything with its, it, its premise. You know, that's kind of the whole act two, right? Act one is set up your premise. Act two is have fun with that premise. And it doesn't ever get to the act two fun with the premise. Um, you know, where you, it, it should be a fun house. Like that movie should be scary from jump. And because you're out there, like, you, you know, you should set up the, the stakes of what it's like to be on the moon. Like, Hey, if you rip your suit, you're going to die. If you know, you get a hole in your helmet, you're going to die. What caused this? Like th there was no point where you really set up the stakes and that leads to our final discussion, which is the scares of the movie. And as I was saying, it's not very scary. Um, there's a couple of attempts at a jump scare. The closest you get to like a real dread kind of scare is when you see the, um, you know, the, the commander who has been infected by the who's a what's it's and <laughs> these little rock monsters or whatever. Um, kind of show up trying to get into the lunar module as the uh, family guy is trying to, you know, do the this launch into orbit to rendezvous and then go home while NASA is telling him like, no, 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 you're, you should stay there. You are going to die. You are straight up going to die. You know, the commander shows up at the window with crawly things inside his suit. And then the movie's kind of over. You know, like so the end of the movie for spoilers, I'm telling you not to see Apollo 18, but if you, if you want to here are the spoilers for it. Uh, so you don't have to, or skip ahead for 60 seconds. But the problem is that it launches the lunar module. It, it strikes. He's like going too fast because of whatever. And then he hits the 
orbiter and then everybody dies. And meanwhile, we learn, hey, all these folks at NASA knew what was up there and wanted a sample brought back or something. Or, or maybe they had heard something about the Russians. It was It's all a little fuzzy. And I think one of the problems is that this movie just got chopped up all to hell in editing. And there's like three or four different endings to this thing. Um, and so let's cover those now because it's not very scary. We'll put a button on that. Um, so there's an alternate ending where the family guy is attacked by um, the commander and he is just surrounded by these aliens as the lunar module loses oxygen and he dies. And so he dies on the surface of the moon. Then there's another ending where the same guy is talking with the NASA folks, the department of defense, and he sees that he has also been infected And then he just starts smashing up the control panel and breaks the camera and the movie ends there. And then there's a third ending where uh, the family guy is in the lunar module and the aliens are trying to get in. And then there's an even bigger alien that busts in and kills him with like this uh, lobster claw pincher thing. And then there's a fourth ending in which the family guy is infected an alarm begins to sound um, as he takes off and the lander goes back and like crashes back into the moon and that's it instead of hitting the orbiter. So all of those are different endings. There are some deleted scenes, you know, like this movie feels like nobody knew exactly what it was supposed to be. And so as a result of not knowing exactly what it was supposed to be, it turns out to be a whole bunch of nothing. So eh, that is Apollo 18. It is a bummer of a found footage movie. I do not recommend it. Um, But, but this is not the end of the dark parade for this month. No, nay folks, we got a whole month full of stuff. In addition to this episode of found footage fool uh, next week, you will be getting heart of horror with K Pollock as we uh, dive into our Valentine's day celebration of love and horror. Uh, so we will have a new Heart of Horror next week. The week after that, we will be doing a What You Watching with Jamie Sammons. Uh, as we uh, are done now with our top 10 list, and we'll just get back to, hey, here's some stuff that we've been watching. Um, and also just an excuse to get Jamie to tell stories about her grandparents and weird family members and whatnot. And then uh, at the end of the month, we will have another new episode of the show proper, uh, which is a show. I don't know what movie we're going to do yet. So if anyone has an idea, drop by the discord and, uh, and, and pitch me, uh, on a movie. I, I kind of have some ideas, but I'm not a hundred percent there yet. So, uh, I will be working on that, but at any rate, uh, happy February to everyone. Thanks as always for, uh, sticking around and listening to all this foolishness, uh, especially when it comes to these terrible found footage movies that I subject myself to. Uh, don't watch Apollo 18. And if you have a good like space found footage movie, let me know because it ain't Europa Report either. We've done that one already, and that's not very good. Um, so I don't know. I don't know that there is one yet. There's like I need the the found footage version of Event Horizon is really what I'm looking for. So uh, drop by the Discord. You can find a link to the Discord on uh, our Facebook group, uh, or you can go by legionpodcasts.com, where you can find um, a, a, a page for this show. If you go to the shows and then the Dark Parade, that'll have links to all the social media stuff, and uh, especially the Discord channel, as well as all the old episodes. So um, again, thanks very much for listening, and thank you as always for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you in a week.